Hi, this is Matt with AppliancePartsPros.com. Today we'll be showing you how to repair your appliance. Remember, anytime you work on an appliance, make sure it's unplugged or the circuit breakers are off so there's no chance of electrocution. Also make sure you turn off your hot and cold water supplies. In this video we're going to show you how to change out the Whirlpool washer inner tub. It's going to be a very easy repair and should only take a few minutes to show you how to do it. If you already have one of these, great. If not, you can click on the link below or get it at AppliancePartsPros.com. When you open up the package, you're going to get the new inner tub. The inner tub is where you put your clothes to wash them. The main reason you be changing it out is if it's damaged and rusty and your clothes are getting stained. In order to change the part, we have to take the washer apart. First thing we're going to do is go around back. Now that we're around back, we're going to put a towel down to catch any water that may come out when we take the hoses off. Make sure you label the hoses, which one's hot and which one's cold, so we don't mix them up when you put them back on. To get the hose off, we're going to use our pliers to loosen them up. Once you have it loose, you can just unscrew it by hand. Now that we have the fill hoses off, we can use our Phillips screwdriver to take out the two screws that hold the console down. You don't have to take them out all the way, you just have to loosen them up enough so that they come out of the cabinet. Once you have the screws loose, you can push the console forward a little bit to unlock it and then rotate it back up and out of the way. Then we can come around front and we have to take out these two gold locking tabs that hold the cabinet to the back wall. We're going to use a flathead screwdriver and just push down on it. Then you can flex forward so the clip comes out of the cabinet. Then you can unhook it from the back wall and pull it off the machine. Once you have the locking clips off, we can take the lid switch wiring harness off. There's a little locking tab that you can lift up on. You can use a flathead screwdriver if it's tight. You can pull the wiring harness out and set it aside. To get the cabinet off, we're going to lift up the lid and grab the lip of the opening right here. And then put our foot down at the bottom of the machine and tilt the cabinet towards you until it's about a 45 degree angle or so. Then you can slide it back and off the frame. Once you have it off, you can set it aside. Now that we have the cabinet off, we can remove the tub cover. It's held in by some locking tabs that go around it. You want to press down above each one to kind of take the tension off and then pull out on it and then release it. And we can go around and do all the rest of them all the way around the tub. Once you have more release, you can lift the tub cover off and set it aside. Now that we have the tub cover off, we can take the agitator out. I'm just going to turn it around so we can take the cap off. If you have a fabric softener dispenser, you can just lift it off. To get the cap off, we're going to stick a small flathead screwdriver in here and turn it to release it. We can lift it off and set it aside. Now we can reach in and pull out the inner cover. If it's in there tight, you may have to reach in with a pair of pliers to break it free. Once you have it free, you can just lift it out and set it aside. Now we can take out the bolt that holds the agitator in. We're going to use a 7 16 inch socket with an extension and a ratchet to take it out. You may have to reach in and hold the lower half of the agitator so you can break the bolt free. Once you have the bolt out of the threads, we can lift out the agitator assembly and set it aside. Now that we have the agitator out, we have to remove the water inlet. We already took the hoses off earlier. All you have to do is lift up on it and release it. Once it slides up, then you can drop the front of it down and then lift it off the back panel. Then we're going to rotate it out of the way. And we're not going to take it all the way out, but we're just going to swing it out of the way so we can get the inner tub out. Now we can take off the hub nut. If you don't have the special spanner wrench, you can just tap it with a screwdriver to knock it free. We're going to use the spanner wrench. We're just going to set it down on. And you want to make sure you use a plastic hammer so you don't damage the tub. And we're just going to loosen it up counterclockwise. Once you have it broke free, you just turn it by hand. And then you can lift the nut off. 
Now that we have the nut off, we can lift the inner tub out. If it won't come off, it's probably because there's a bunch of gunk down in here from over the years. So you can put some penetrating oil down in here and let it soak in. And you may have to take a hammer and kind of tap around here to break anything loose and try to get the tub to come free. Once you have your oil soaking in there and you've tapped on it, you can also try to rock it back and forth to try to break it free. You can see ours finally broke free. Once you have it loose, you can pull it out of the washer. Here's the old inner tub next to the new one. If you already have one of these, great. If not, you can get it at appliancepartspros.com. To put the new inner tub in, we're just going to carefully line it up with the transmission shaft and set it into place. Now that we have the inner tub in, we can put the hub nut back on. We're just going to line it up and get it started. It's just a regular thread, so clockwise to tighten it down. We're going to use the spanner wrench to tighten it down, but same as when you took it off, you can use a screwdriver and a hammer to tighten it up if you don't have the wrench. Once you have it tightened down, we can remount the water inlet. To put it in, we're going to pick it up and turn it around. We're going to set these feet down into the openings in the back panel. And then as you lift it up, you want to make sure that the rear bulkhead sits in these little slots right here on the fittings where the fill hose is attached to. Once you have it in place, you can lift it up. Once it stops, we're going to have to lift up on the assembly and push back on it so this middle mounting tab catches. Once you have it there, you can push down a little bit to lock it in place. And then we can put the tub cover on. To put it on, we're going to line it up so the inlet is right in line with this opening. And we're going to push it all the way back into place. Once you have it on the tub, you want to go around and make sure the locking tabs are lined up and that all the tabs are on the outside of the tub. Once you're ready, you can push down above all these to lock them in place. Once you have the first one in, we can do the rest. Now that we have it installed, we can put the agitator assembly in. To put the agitator in, we're going to dump out the agitator bolt. We're going to use the 7 16 inch socket with the ratchet and the extension. We're going to put the agitator bolt into the socket and then we're going to lift it up into the agitator and make sure it goes into the hole. Once you have it lined up, you can lower the agitator assembly down into the washer. Once you have it down all the way, you can tighten down the agitator bolt. Once it starts to get tight, you're going to have to hold the lower agitator while we tighten it down. In order to make it easier to put the cap into the agitator, we're going to take some liquid soap and put it around the seal. This will help it go down in there and slide into place. If it gets hung up, you can turn the cap in order to get it to seat down in there properly. Once you have the soap on it, you can put it into the agitator. To put it in, all you have to do is set it down into the agitator. You want to make sure you get it all the way down and it's seated properly. Once you have it in there, we can put the agitator cap on. Whether you have the agitator cap or the fabric softener dispenser, all you have to do is line it up with the upper agitator and snap it back into place. Once you have it on, we can put the washer cabinet back on. In order to put the cabinet back on, we're going to line it up at the same angle we took it off. And we're going to hook the lip underneath the front. And we're going to set the cabinet down so that the tabs come through the holes in the cabinet. Once you have the cabinet set down, you can pull on the back panel 
to make sure that the plastic piece goes into the cabinet. Once you have both sides in, we can put the retaining clips on. To put the clip on, we're going to hook it onto the back panel and clip it onto the cabinet. Once you have this side on, we can do the other side. Once you have both clips in, we can grab the lid switch wiring harness and plug it back in. It can only go on one way. Just make sure it goes on all the way and locks in. Once you have the wire harness attached, we can close the console. Slowly let the console down and get behind it so we can line up the locking tabs. And Once you have them in on each side, you can pull back a little bit to lock them into place. And then we can use our Phillips screwdriver to tighten down the screws. To put the fill hoses back on, we're just going to line them up and make sure that they go on straight. You don't want to cross thread them. Once you have them snug, you can grab our pliers and tighten it down so you get a good seal and there's no leaks. Now that we have the fill hoses back on, you can plug the washer back in, turn the water on and take up her spin. Thanks for joining us for another successful repair brought to you by appliancepartspros.com. Check out our other repair videos on our site, Facebook, and YouTube.